Hello, everyone. So I welcome you back to this lecture series on data communication. And in this lecture six, so this is the sixth lecture we are having today, where uh, I'm going to discuss on switching concept. Okay, so the idea of switching is something like this. So we have uh, some devices that need to be communicated, right? And when we are willing to connect these devices, like if I'm having three devices that need to be connected, then I have two very good options. The first option is to connect all the devices to each other, right? So which we studied as mesh topology, right? So we studied this concept as mesh topology. Or we can have a central hub, right? A central hub. And this hub will connect to the devices, right? So we have three pieces and these three computers can now communicate each other using this topology. So this kind of topology is studied as star Right, so what we are dealing here is, right, so we have computers that need to be connected for communications, right? And we use the concept of topology. Whether I can use a, a mesh topology or a star topology. But there are certain limitations of this uh, two kinds of connections we make. One is, the distance between uh, the devices, if it increases, then it is impossible or impractical uh, to, to connect. This. So we have one is the distance. Okay, so let's take a minute. So one. So one difficulty, uh, one difficulty that we observe is the distance. Okay, so when we have the distance between these two devices, it is impractical. And when the number of users increase, when the number of computers are increasing, number of PCs are increasing, then these two methods will become impractical. But there is possible to use another two topologies like burst of culture. So which will address the issue of distance, but the increase in number of the pieces will increase the complexity of the, pro of the problem. So one of the best solution, so that uh, you know, to handle the distance and also the number of pieces is called switching. Right? So in this case, there are devices, okay? There are devices A, B, and C, and we use the network of switches. So we have a network of switches. So we use a symbol like this. Right? Now this network of switches is used that will connect these devices. So my device A is connected to the switch and this switches are interconnected. Now different devices are connected to this switches. 
So by using switching technology, the issue of distance and the number of pieces that we want to connect is drastically increased. So that's what we use in our internet also. So there are two kinds of switching that are designed. They are called as circuit switching. The second kind of technique is called packet switching. Right? So in this lecture, we are going to discuss on these two kinds of switching methods. The circuit switching and the another one is called as packet switching. So if we look at the TCP IP layer where we can observe these uh, switching technologies. So if I take the physical layer, about the concept of circuit switching, we will deal with it, okay? So first we will understand where we are going to observe. In the physical layer, we are going to see only the circuit switching. Okay. Whereas in the remaining layers, that is in the data link layer, network layer, and transport layer, we see, we observe what is called as packet switching. Right? And application layer, in the application layer, right, we observe a special kind of switching called as a message switching. Okay, only the application layer, this, uh, the data that is going to be transferred is called as uh, message switching. But the scope of our syllabus is will be highly focused on circuit switching and packet switching networks. So in, uh, if we see the difference between, what do you mean by this circuit switching and packet switching is? To be said in a very simple terms, in circuit switching, we make the resource allocation. Whereas the resources is not allocated. So we have resource allocation here, we allocate the resources, resources like bandwidth, right, buffer, processing. These resources are allocated for to establish the communication. But that is not the case with the packet switching. So packet switching will not allocate the resources. On the demand, the resources are utilized, right? Now, the, where do we observe these circuit switching? Circuit switching we popularly observe in the telephone network, right? Where the user will date to an another user through a, a pattern of numbers. And the switches are connected. Once the communication is established, there will be a disconnection process. So a permanent connection is established between the two users. That is not the case with the packet switching. Why we cannot use circuit switching? See, in circuit, there is a permanent allocation of resources, right? So if I make a telephone connection, the bandwidth is permanently allotted to the user until they disconnect. So in that time gap, the users are effectively using the allocated bandwidth. Of course, there are some uh, silent silences are there, but even then, the, uh, the utilization of bandwidth is very effective. If I just take this to the computer networks, right? Even though we are not using internet, we can ex we have experienced. We are communicated. We are connected to the net. So in that case, when the ideal time is there, the resources are completely underutilized. They are, that will become very inefficient. So sir. The computer networks cannot rely, cannot rely on the circuit switching concept. The computer networks will rely on the, are based on the uh, packet switching. 
right so this is uh, we are now going to discuss in depth about uh, these concepts of circuit and packet switching now let us uh, understand the idea of circuit switching so we will discuss now on circuit switching and later we will go into the concept of packet switching so a switch is a say is a device that will connect the various number of lines so we have a switch right and there are some n input number of lines that it can connect and there are some lines that will go from input to output let me write that switch right so we will assume that we have a network of three switches okay so i'll take three switches in this case so we have the switch a this is my switch b and let's call this as switch c okay and there are two users let's call this as alice and we have one more user who is called as bob let's call this as b right now this device is connected to this switch so we are going to let's connect this switch so my system is connected to this switch right now switch is having multiple input and multiple output lines so what we need to do is we need to first multiplex these lines right so that a single line can be used so let us first multiplex it okay so i'll multiplex them. right similarly i will now what we can do is now assuming that the switch the a is it is willing to connect to b right so it will request through the a now the a will connect it to the c then the c switch will connect it to the b so this is how this that's how the setup will happen so to understand it's better let us first write this there okay so i am assuming that a and b devices are connected through these two switches a switch and c switch now the output lines are now multiplexed see the switch implicitly this multiplexer will be there okay just for demonstration purpose as separate so now the a is sending to this uh, i mean multiplexing that data to c now c is data now the switch b or this my desktop b is connected to the switch c to this line right so what will happen in the circuit switch in circuit switching we have three phases let us first understand the setup phase okay what is the diagram i have here is i have a network of switches right so this is my network of switch and 
I am assuming that there are three switches that are present. They're all connected. And we have, we have device A that wants to establish a connection to device B. So device A is willing to establish a connection so that they can do the communication. So now we will, A will make a dialogue. It means it will set up a connection. So it will request for A for the connection. Now A will now see that to which switch the request is being made. So this path is well defined. So A will now connect it to the C. So my connection will go something like this. So A is connecting to the switch A. From here, I'll come to switch C and through the switch C, the connection is made to device B. So this uh, setup will always be there. So once the setup is done, once the devices are now connected, there will be a second phase, which is called as a data transfer phase. Right? Now, after the setup is done, the data will flow. There is a continuous flow of data, remember. So we are not sending in small chunks. The, the whole resources, once it is allocated, there is a continuous flow of flow. So that is the data transfer. The final phase will, once the data is completed, the data transfer is completed, we have teardown phase. So that means the disconnection, the resources are disallocated, so they are released. So the circuit switching uses three phases, setup phase, data transfer phase, and teardown phase, right? So here, what we have to observe is, the circuit switching is taking is happening only at the physical layer, only with the signals. So we are seeing that it is happening at the physical layer. Right? And the second one is we are not using, uh, I mean, we are not sending the data in, in uh, chunks or in small pieces. Instead, we are sending a continuous data. So we are going to multiplex these channels either using FDM or PDM techniques. Okay, so either you do the multiplexing in the frequency domain or in the uh, frequency domain. Okay, so another point that I had to let me list it, it is it is a continuous day, right? So we don't have a packetized kind of data. And since the connection is established, there is no issue or no concept, something called as address. So there is no addressing here issue. So to which address the data has to be sent because there is a permanent uh, circuit between the two users. Right? So what is the, uh, how, how we can make the evaluation this, I mean, evaluation of this, uh, concept. So we are going to use two evaluation methods. One is the efficiency. Right? So if you look at this, the efficiency of this uh, circuit switching is not so good. It's not so efficient. Okay, so it's not so efficient. Why? Because when there is no data from A to send, okay, so only when the data is there, continuous data is there, then the bandwidth is effectively utilized or else we don't do that. So in computer networks, if I use the circuit switching, then it will not be efficient because many a times we connect our computer to the internet, but it, we don't do any kind of communications. In that case, if I use circuit switching, then very obvious that the efficiency will be uh, very, very poor in this case. The another metric that we will use is delay, right? So what are all the delay that we are going to observe? So what we see in our example is we have a device A and we have a switch. Right, two switches we used. 
and there is one more device B, right? So let us see that how if I draw that timeline. Okay, so I'm going to draw a simple timeline diagram to understand what is happening with the delay. So there is a first request that is made. So the data will be, we are well known that uh, th there will be no waiting time at the switch. So the switch will directly connect to the devices. So we have this first setup request phase. Okay, so set up with request phase. We don't have a, a waiting delay here. Only the propagation delay between these four devices need to be considered. Okay, then after the setup is requested, the B will send one acknowledgement, right? So it means we are going to complete what is called as connect phase. So we are going to connect these two. So this is the time delay that we are experiencing. One is the time delay for connect plus the propagation. Now, once the connection is established, we are going to transfer the data. Right? So we experience one more delay. That is the, the, uh, the delay that happens in the data transfer or the size of the data itself along with the propagation. Now, once we are completed with the data connection, there is a teardown phase, right? So we are going to disconnect, make the resources released. So we have what is called as disconnection phase. So we are going to disconnect. So delay what we are going to observe is only when we are making connection, when there is a data transfer and disconnection phase. And now the delay that we are also going to observe is the propagation time, right? So this is the delay that we have to observe in the uh, circuit switching. We will compare it with when we will study the packet switching and see that uh, how much delay that the packet switching is uh, actually created. Fine. So just to rewind it, uh, the circuit switching, what we did is we assume that there is a network of switches and there are three switches. They're all connected. Okay. Uh, we are going to see that these devices are, are connected, not, not like this isolated. I mean, because I've not shown that in the diagram, there will be multiplexers used they all will be connected, right? So some one or the other way we see that they are connected. So if I take here, this could be connected like this. Something like that, I cannot draw here. Okay, so this device could be connected from B to C in some way okay, through this, uh, line here, right? And uh, there are two devices that are connected and A want to communicate, A want to communicate to B. So A want to communicate it to B. So there will be a three phases. The setup phase where the connection will be made and the resources are allocated and the data transfer will happen. Once the data transfer is done, we have a teardown phase. So we observe this in the physical layer. There is a uh, uh, you know, the channel is shared using the TDM techniques uh, and uh, the data is continuous. We are not going to packetize that. And there is no addressing requirement also. So it is not efficient for computer network because when there is no data communication is happening, then the resources are under -replaced. So it is very inefficient. And we have studied the delay. Now we observe the delay in three, in three first three parts, that is in connection, disconnection, data transfer, and the propagation, right? So now let us understand packet switch. Right? 
right? So instead of uh, continuously sending the data, we are going to uh, send the data whenever uh, it is necessary. And in packet switching, we are going to discuss two kinds of switching networks. One is called as datagram switching. The another uh, is called as virtual circuits. So in packet switching, uh, to be very specific networks, there are two types, datagram network, and virtual circuit network, right? So the idea of these packet networks is something like this. So we have these special devices, which are called as routers. So this is a symbol we use. Let us assume that my network, our network is having four routers and all these routers are connected. And again, there are two users, A and there is user B. Now, instead of sending the uh, data continuously into the network, we are going to packetize. Like if you look, look at the, in the first module, when we discuss about the data link layer and network layer, in network layer, we are dividing them into small pieces called packets, and then again, into frames in the data link. Okay, so now these devices are connected. And we are having packets to transfer. So we have packet one, there is a packet two, and we have packet three. Now in packet switching, if, if we, to be very specific, in the datagram network, these packets are forwarded. The A is, node A will forward to the router. Now once the router receives this, it will not have a permanent connection, but instead this will push the various packets, like the packet number three might go to this router. Here, the packet number one might be pushed and packet two might take this route. Right, so the, the data will be, now the packets are not following one path because the resources are dynamically allocated. So when the packet is arrived, where there is the resources, that packet will be forward to that network. So the, the receiving of packet, each of these packets might experience different delays. So the packet that I receive at the end might be out of order. I may receive something like three, one, and two. Instead of one, two, three, the packets are received in an out of so it is left to the higher layers how to rearrange these packets, right? So here, this datagram network or packet switching network, uh, the datagram packet or datagram network is also called as connectionless service. Okay. So what is happening here? in the datagram network, the node A is generating the packets and the packets are being transported through this network of uh, devices, switches, which are called routers in this case, without any resource allocation. So they are forwarded to different other routers. So the way that we receive the routers 
will be out of art. So uh, the datagram networks uh, will, will work like this. And each of these routers, they maintain what is called as a routing table. Okay, a routing table may include that what is the destination address? Okay, so there is a destination address and what is the port number? It includes a, a, a routing table. So this is called as a routing table. Every uh, switch here will use a, a routing table. where it includes the destination address to which next destination and which port number it has to be. So there, like for A, there is a destination address. Let's, let's call this destination address as 1222. And this router is having three ports, one, port two, port three, and there are four ports, right? Sorry, four ports are. So it will, the routing table now it will contains now let us think that this is my next router 1432 so i will be having a destination address here at this router as we are talking about this router here so the destination address is uh, 1432 and the port it has to take up is right so a routing table will be maintained for which device and through which port this data has to be transferred so every device will maintain this, uh, what is called as uh, the destination address. So this will be, uh, the destination is the, the destination address is the, you know, header of the packet in a datagram. So of course the efficiency is better because only whenever uh, the data is there. So we are utilizing the bandwidth, right? So what about the delay? So efficiencies, when we take the computer networks, the datagram networks produces, uh, gives us a very uh, good efficiency. So what is the delay that we are going to experience? So we have a node, we have switches, right? And there is a destination. So from node A to node B, let us assume that we are going through two switches. So let's draw the timeline. So remember that we don't have any setup or tear down kind of things. So A will just send the data to B, right? So it will send the data to B. So we have what is called as transmission time. So let's call this as T transmission. And the time it takes to reach from T1 to T2, there is a propagation, right? So we have, let's call this as stop, fine. Now, when it reaches to this router, it's not going to immediately transfer the data. You know, it has to wait for the other packets to arrive and independently it has to send them. So there is some waiting time. So let's call this as TW. So after some waiting time, the data will be again forward with again its own propagation time and the T transmission. Now, instead of trans, I will let it be trans. And finally, this router will transfer to the destination. So we have another propagation time and another transmission time here. And there is also a waiting time. So for this example, we see that there are three transmission times and we have three propagation times, correct? And we have two waiting times. So they could be same or they could be different. So let them write it as W1 plus W2, right? So the total delay that is experienced in the network layer is higher than what we observed in, uh, uh, in case of uh, uh, the circuit switching. So we have only the propagation delay and the data, okay, the time for the transmission of the 
fact, uh, the data. But here in this case, uh, we are also going to add up more delay in this. So because of what is called as the waiting time, right? So this is what is called as a datagram. So datagram networks are much efficient uh, uh, than the uh, circuit switching for the use in computer networks. Now, uh, there is one more kind of uh, network, uh, which is called virtual circuit. That is a blend of both the circuit switching and also the datagram switching. What advantage we see with the, the circuit switching uh, is the, uh, the, the delay. You know, the, there is, uh, the delay is much less than the datagram switching, but efficiency is the problem. So both these ideas are mixed in order to get a different kind of network, which is called as virtual circuits. Virtual circuit network. Okay. Okay, so we will stop at this point and uh, continue about the virtual circuit networks in our next week. Thank you very much.